So Android has always had a really cool feature of basically having the developer mode where you can go ahead and actually enable some of the developer options that developers typically use on really any Android phone out there. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite ones that I've used throughout the years, probably some other ones I haven't used but other people have talked about. If you want to enable your developer options on most Android phones, you can go into your Android settings. You want to scroll down into about phone and you want to basically come down wherever it shows your specific, you know, build number right at the very bottom. And you want to tap that a couple times and then it's going to allow you to become a developer. So that's basically how you become a developer. And then what you can do here is you can go into your system settings, scroll down and you should see a developer options option and you're basically here. Now, one of the biggest things and one of the main reasons people end up using something like, you know, developer options is because of a few different things. USB debugging is probably the most popular reason why developer mode options are enabled. So USB debugging allows you to basically go ahead and essentially get you into debug mode, which gives you a little bit more capability when you're plugging in a device into your PC. Now it tells you USB debugging is intended for development purposes you know, only use it to copy data, all this other stuff, you probably want to go ahead and keep it enabled. That is probably one of the biggest things that a lot of people use within USB debugging. So that's probably the first thing I probably recommend keeping in mind. Now, another thing that I would honestly recommend you to kind of get your idea on is with OEM unlocking. So this allows you to go ahead and get your bootloader unlocked. Now, if you ever wanted to custom ROM your phone, if you wanted to install something different on your device, well, you can actually go ahead and just enable the specific thing. And what this will allow you to do is it will give you the capability of installing a root, but also probably custom ROMing your device. Now, I don't even think you really need to custom ROM your phone anymore. I think there's a lot of other like devices out there that already give you a lot of features that you don't even really need a custom ROM for. But it's still something really cool that your device actually has the capability of. And that in and of itself is a really, really cool thing. Now, another thing that I actually do like just within this specific panel in and of itself is right here where it says show refresh rate. This is something that I really do like because when you enable it, it will actually give you a little thing at the top left corner of showing you when your phone is using the 120 hertz panel or when it's using a 60 hertz panel. That is something that can be very annoying to some people. But if you're playing a game, if you're just going through certain applications, you can actually have that in the top left corner and it's actually really cool. And it's even cooler because sometimes you can see that when it's at 60 hertz, it's technically saving battery. But when it's at 120 hertz, that's when it actually goes up to, you know, basically starts using a little bit more battery. So personally for me, that's something that's really cool. We'll just turn it off for the base of this video. Now, another thing is this specific panel right here. So force peak refresh rate. What this means is that your specific battery is always going to be forced at 120 hertz. Now, you don't really need to have this enabled for a majority of people out there. If I go ahead and basically show my refresh rate now, you can see that I'm always going to be at 120 hertz now rather than being at 60 hertz. There's advantages to this. If you want to have a refresh rate constantly at 120 hertz all the time, then that's something that's cool. You don't have to really worry about you know, it going down or it being a little choppy here and there. Sometimes if you do certain applications or go certain places, it can cut down to 60 hertz. However, this is horrible for battery life. There's really no reason for anybody to have this specific option on. So I would say for the average person, just go ahead and just keep this disabled. But it is still a very cool thing that we have that capability of doing if you really want to go and kind of mess with it. Now, one of the things I'd probably recommend keeping on as well is this mobile data always active. If your Wi-Fi connection is ever bad or if it's not good, it can always switch back over to your, it can basically use your mobile, it can use your mobile data and your iPhone kind of side by side. So whenever your Wi-Fi is slow, it can switch over to data. And that's another cool thing. I know a lot of people that have that kind of stuff on as well. So I'd probably recommend keeping that on too. Now, another funny thing I've seen a lot of people do is with this show taps. So what this does is it allows you to basically show the taps on your display. So if you look very closely, as I'm kind of getting off the display, you can see that I do have a little thing that kind of just, you know, hovers behind it. I really don't think people should even be having this on all the time, but it's still something cool that you have. And it's another cool option. Now, some of these animation ones are ones that I've seen a lot of people mess with as well. So what these do is basically with these window animation scales, you can go and see whether you want them at like 1.5x or if you want them at standard, you know, 1x. The transition animations, you can go and see whether you want them on or off. So you can see that if I go and if I go ahead and actually turn this off, so if I turn this animation off, and if I go this one off, watch what happens. You can see how much faster this phone is. It is insane. I really don't think anybody should be even be using this like this, but it's still something that's really cool. And if you're into that kind of stuff, then that's awesome. In this case, I'm going to go and turn it back on. 
But that's something that's kind of funny. I don't know why anybody would even want that in the first place. But that's something that you kind of have that's you know going on within your developer options. Now, there are tons and tons of more options down here, but I feel like the further and further you go, the more and more or less relevant they are to the average person. And basically, we're all the way at the bottom. So and those are some of my favorite, I guess, developer options I'd recommend turning on, at least in 2023 on Android 14 so far. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.